Hello guys and welcome back to Play the J. We're back for round two of the Physrix Invitational PUBG Scrims and we saw that last round Minute Coffee Shop taking the first chicken dinner of the evening here and we're about ready to get started here for round number two. Alright guys, so here we are for round number two. We are on to Miramar. After this, we will be having again one round of Erangel and Miramar to close out the evening. So this is the fourth and final round of the Physrix Invitational PUBG scrims here for December. So all the invited teams here vying to get that top spot, getting that little prize that the organizers have in store. So of course, points all to play for here, but there's of course going to be lots of bragging rights given the kind of teams that we do have here on display. So it looks like Stadium Fighter is back in the game here. They were sharing with Gang FTY just now. I'm not sure if Gang FTY is in for this, as I think they only had two players around there. But uh, I, yeah, I think they're still in this game here. So we do are back up towards 17 teams here. So only Battle Arena Elites, Genius Team, and also Silver Wolves not making an appearance out of the 20 invited teams. But uh, we'll see how this is going to be going here. And we do see that there's quite a good spread here in terms of where the teams are going for the very start of the round. So it looks like Face Gaming here going to be going down to Valo Del Mar. Frostfire going to be going to Chumacera once again here. They do team tend to go here in most of their rounds here on Miramar. Monte Nuevo going to be all uh, occupied by Stadium Fighter. Physics uh, Gaming and Stage Gaming here going to be... Uh, Potentially duking out for El Azahar at the moment. Geek Fam going to be going towards Kempo Militar, one of their favorite spots here. But uh, we are going to see that here. Dinosaur going to get taken down by M0 here early on. Hickey also running around, trying to get into a little bit better of space for the time being, as there's only going to be Demon Eater and uh, M0 here for getting FDY. So they're going for that high risk, high strategy high reward strategy for the time being and they're gonna scare Hickey away just a little bit but uh, now we can already see the circle gonna be all the way up here towards the northwest so most of the teams not gonna be inside so that might be a little bit more interesting to see how that fares up and uh, we tend to see this here in San Martin quite a bit as uh, currently Quacker is gonna be always dropping here pretty much almost every game here on Miramar as uh, Flash Vision tends to move between here and Picado, but these teams are no strangers to one another here and uh, they do take turns and turns of seeing who can get the better of each other but San Martin one of those places where it's just so nice and big that usually you don't have too many of a problem too much of a problem sorry of whether or not that you will be able to get out okay or rather just even go through your whole looting phase without actually meeting any one of these teams but Skyrex actually seems to be uh, moving into this multi-story building here I'm not sure whether he knows what's up in terms of uh, Mr. Paw's presence upstairs here so he's just gonna bide his time and see whether he can get a little bit more information while he, the rest of his team continues his loot up just a little bit more Geek fam gonna be having a nice clear rotation into the northern side of the map um, towards the northwest so we'll see them probably making it very nice and straightforward but stage gaming here occupying the southern part of al azahar currently physics gaming is going to be over on that northern side here so they are going to just be a bit mindful of the potential presence there from stage gaming they would have seen them drop in so these teams probably just want to be keeping their distance just a little bit here as uh, in competitive pubg it's not really in your favor to actually take a lot of these early game fights as it does tend to deplete your resources that you might have in the later stages which you do want to try and remain and get as much uh, economic or utility as you can from the gear that you do loot because there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to fight in one of these urban hotspots that does give you the opportunity to loot up just a little bit more as uh, these teams are just going to be uh, taking their time see also what is the kind of fights that you want to take as uh, you do want to try and get inside the zone in one piece so you can't do that if you get too entangled in these very early game fights but now it looks like Skyrex here doesn't have Mr. Paw to worry about Mr. Paw did manage to make it across the road here by taking a little bit of damage I'm not sure if that was from fall damage or a few shots coming up from Team Quacker just then so in any case we are going to be seeing whether things are going to be heating up a little bit here but we could potentially see that Quacker does not usually need a lot of time to loot up here before they're comfortable to play for the rest of the game but now 
we are seeing that Red Sea is going to be very much in their trademark power grid section here, not having any um, teams to actually worry about too much. Sometimes Gold Army Factory comes over here, though they do like this Minas Generales graveyard and La Bandita area. So you've seen them drop here quite a few times here over on some of the scrims and tournaments that I've uh, had the pleasure of watching. Physrix Gaming here making their move quite early up from the northern side of Al Azahar. They're probably going to make their way and get into one of these spots early on and loot up. Otaro here already going to be moving up very quickly to Alcantara for Stadium Fighter and get into a better position to try and rotate in, assuming the circle centers around Crater Fields. But now ONE Esports here is still going to be very close to uh, Let Me Give Me Gold here in Impala as currently we do have Ginks, MMP and Dukong going to be currently the furthest players forward. Serapex actually quite separated from the rest of his team. They are a little bit further north and he's actually going to open up with a few shots there. Now, I'm not sure if he does want to give his position away, but it looks like he's going to be on the move regardless here and see whether or not he can actually get out of here pronto so lucky for him he does have a nice vehicle to just sitting there waiting for him while ONE Esports probably gonna have to scrounge around a little bit here I'm not sure what other vehicles that they might have at their disposal but I think it shouldn't be too much an issue usually on this map you can get quite a few vehicles and it's very much necessary to make those rotations especially when you get circles like this there's just so much landmass and many opportunities to come in from different sides of the circle that you can really afford to wait until later stages than maybe say on Erangel. but of course we'll see how it's actually going to be a bit different if when they introduce uh, Vikendi into the competitive map pool and everything. I, I know it's a very new map, so probably we haven't seen it feature uh, much in the way of scrims here, especially on the Physics uh, PUBG Invitational scrims. But if they have Season 2 in next month, uh, it would be interesting to see how the spread is going to go there. But currently, there haven't been too many competitive games on that map just yet. And uh, definitely does look interesting to see how teams will be handling a third team in their repertoire. Usually some teams will be favoring very much playing with Erangel or Miramar. I think the vast majority does enjoy playing on Erangel just a little bit more as it really does give them that uh, familiarity that uh, most of the teams are very much accustomed to and being able to play to their strengths. Miramar definitely will have different strategies required here and Vikendi will be no different I'm sure and looking forward to seeing how those games will be going I'm very excited to see them feature in a tournament now it looks like Frostfire moving up from Chumacera here they are going to be taking up uh, this western road here trying to get up a little bit further up north and uh, Coventure here uh, still looting up in Los Leones they can afford to probably stay there a little bit longer same with uh, ONE if they're able to get enough loot because they could probably heal for days there and not take too much damage from the early stages of the circle so we can potentially see more of that coming out here I think GeekFam here might be opting to do the same here as long as they can continue to finish up um, looting up at Campo Militar side of things but now everyone else is starting to make their way over vengeance already all of uh, just trying to take up this position here on the northern side of crater fields get a little bit more vision and Maybe be a little bit more less predictable for other teams to spot them out just now But most of the teams here are just not inside the circle just yet Gold army factory are moving in pretty closely here They have Roy here as nine holy as well gonna be just taking up this position just a little bit to the eastern side of the crater fields Frostfire moving up to the western side as uh, they're going to have quite a bit of free space there available to them not any teams uh, too close to them Red Sea also taking up that position just south of Crater Fields at the moment here and it looks like Geekfan going to be in on the move here and see whether they can actually uh, do anything better so I appreciate the constructive feedback on, on the casting I'm trying to say the word here a little bit less so uh, you can keep track if you want I'm making that conscious effort just trying to make it a little bit more less repetitive in that sense so see how that goes but dreams here attracting quite a bit of fire kids young and uh, uh and the co from stage gaming gonna try and see if they can land those long range connections here and i've done it again <laughs> well uh, i i said i'll try so that's what i'll do and uh yes we can see that stage gaming here is just going to be taking up this position a little bit longer here see whether they can catch any other teams in rotation as they start planning out their own rotation phase going on 
And now it looks like most of the teams here have made their way over. And uh, we're already seeing GoVenture is still taking their time on their looting phase here. They do want to try and uh, take their time. They can afford to do so. Most of the teams will be piling in towards the center of the circle. But uh, there's still going to be lots of open space here. Now just remember that the flight path did make it such that this is always going to be very sparsely populated. And this is always going to be a very heavy zone along the flight path here. So some of the teams here, Face Gaming, Stadium Fighter, all having the right idea. Frostfire as well, all moving into these western sides of the circle. So they can still try and get into very central positions inside the circle a bit later on. As uh, they will have the opportunity and the space to do so. Savior going to be rotating very close to Lemon Gaming Gold here for the time being. Cerebix actually changing his course a little bit more with Sepuger. And I'm not sure whether they have some... Uh, Road Rage type of uh, ambitions out here. And Xavier is actually getting out of the vehicle here. He's going to see if he can land some shots on Cerebic Sepulcher. He gets out of the vehicle. It takes quite a mouthful there. And Xavier going to be able to get the shots there. Kenny going to be able to, to get out and try and help his teammate a little bit. Now Cerebix also taking quite a bit of damage. His car is already smoking and a little bit more concerted fire here from Geekback is going to make it like incredibly difficult. Cerebix actually spins out a little bit here and he gets into the new vehicle but he's already taken one big hit there. And it's only one hit away I would feel from getting completely taken out of the game here. But looks like Sepulcher is going to be the only one. And looks like Lemon Gaming Gold is going to have to manage this game with one player less. But looks very much like almost all the teams have managed to traverse inside. Maybe it's just ONE Esports and GoVenture just straddling a little bit on the blue zone. But the way that they're timing it does allow them to see what the second circle is going to be like. And they can move directly for it. And look at the shift here. All these teams here are going to have to move. We're going to see Red Sea going to have to move a little bit further south. Northwestern side, uh, Frostfire probably going to have to make their moves as well. So let me give me gold here facing further problems with stage gaming. And whoa, Shaz blows up into a ball of flames there. And looks like Kick Zion going to be able to get that final shot onto Cerebix. So looks like let me give me gold not going to be here any longer in this game. Three kills so far for stage gaming as they finish off the first team. But now, with this circle presenting itself in this way, it does give these teams a lot of uh, space to maneuver. We already see Frostfire, one of the teams quickest to move here. Gold Army Factory moving quite quick early as well, but they do have a bit more of distance to cover here to try and get into inside one of those more central positions. And we can probably see how both are going to be uh, occupying quite a bit of space here. But Dini taking quite a few hits for Steady Fighter there as he runs right past uh, the face gaming players here, and now it looks like Dini going to get taken out. Lion is also going through the same zone here. He's attracting quite a bit of fire here. And uh, for the time being, doesn't look like the rest of uh, Stadium Fighter are going to be incurring too much wrath there. Kahaya actually taking out that position a little bit further towards the eastern side. And now going to be bugging out just a little bit more. See whether he can meet up with Lion Desert. As uh, currently, they don't want to have anything to do with the problems on that side of things. Now, Demon Eater and M0, the last, or the rather the only two players here for Gang FDY, gonna have to try and uh, see if they can just be a little bit more condensed together here. As currently, there is just not um, a lot of cover available to them. But yes, given their position on the circle, they're gonna have to make that rotation anyways here. Rascal gonna finish off Dini there as uh, Face Gaming gets their first uh, kills of the game. And uh, looks like we have uh, Zach here going to be getting a nice little bit of present. AWM and Gilly Suit are going to enter the field and level 3 out of his mind. And we did manage to see some good uh, uh, action from him in the Gilly Suit last week. And looks like Rascal going to get caught out by Kahaya here. And by the side of the road, just not a lot that he could do with the high ground advantage that Kahaya did have available to him. So he's going to continue onwards here after getting that little bit of an early kill there. But now it looks like we have Red Sea putting up some shots towards the rotation coming out from Physics Gaming here. Now it looks like Saya taking quite a bit of damage there. Forced to get out of his vehicle there. Trying to get off the heel and... Looks like Awang and X-Fang really not hanging around. X-Fang actually going to hit against that uh, uh, watering instrument. 
lying across the field there. Obviously hasn't been maintained properly. It's all resting and everything, but it looks like Syed going to be getting that heal off inside the building there. Joku just trying to get a bit more vision onto him. Not going to give him a free ride to get inside the zone, but now looks like Supak Choi getting taken down. King Pat going to town on Oini, moving in late from the circle here. And now Monty is trying to see what shots he can get. MMP taking quite a bit of damage there. Now, going to back down just a little bit here, but looks like Gang's actually going to get uh, taken down here for a moment as Joku also trying to get some shots returning in this other opposite direction here. Get Relieve some of the pressure, but he doesn't have a lot of time. Geekpan is going to be healing up just a little bit while Jangs and Savior, was, while still at full HP, going to be moving around the side, see whether or not they can get a better angle. Jangs for the most part here. Ooh, looks like his nade dealt a little bit of damage there to MMP and MMP going to get caught out of the building there. And now Jangs having been res here. Gonna still need some healing as we already seen Kenny and Monty moving in here. They're gonna try and put the finishing touches here. And uh, for the most part, it does look like they managed to finish eliminating them. Kenny getting knocked down only there in that fracas. But we're already seeing that uh, Physrix Esports here going at it with Vengeance right now. Vengeance trying to hold off. There's only Mox gonna be left up here. Hickey gonna pull off the heal for the time being. And now Mox gonna have to do the same here. Otherwise, he's gonna be at a huge disadvantage here in this fight so now we're gonna see if he can get a little bit of a glimpse of Mox. Mox still on the low ground here and oh dealing out a lot of damage to Hickey but looks like Vengeance not gonna be able to come out on top of that one but there's only gonna be Hickey that's left here for Fizzard Esports so he's have to do the best that he can with the the kind of situation that he's in but looks like Kaya moving in late here to try and meet up with the rest of Steady Fighter actually driving right past Team Quacker here still at full strength or, sorry, he is actually paving the way. It's still going to be the other two members coming in. And, whoa, the airtime on that Mirado. Pretty nice, but it's going to spin out a little bit. But uh, should be well more or less hidden from the rest of Quacker players here as they're trying to get inside the zone. But we're already seeing that there's going to be Gold Army Factory uh, putting some shots towards the players there. As they're gaming, as they're just trying to maneuver their way in a little bit better here. Dream's actually getting taken down by Kenny, so a little bit of third party action bit there, and now Geek Fam, actually they have Janks getting taken out there in the early stages of that uh, long range battle that they have going on at the moment. Red Sea now engaging with Flash Vision as well as they're coming out from the crater field side of things. Currently Red Sea is in that um, position right between the two craters and going to just be hanging out there for the time being. They do have a little bit of a spread. I'm going to give them a lot of map control and vision on the surrounding areas. But now we're seeing Zach here. Going to be under a lot of pressure. He does have the players there from Physrix. Uh, Gaming going to be up on the high ground. Now, going to reposition just a little bit while he waits for Seravim and Chi to get into position. Try and help him out just a little bit here. And the nade going to come ooh, almost right back down on that sack. But it looks like he's going to be able to get enough clearance for the time being. But JZG gets some shots onto him. But he's actually running towards his teammates. Should be able to get into a little bit more of a better position. Now, looking at how the rest of these teams are faring, most of the teams here have already gotten their positions inside the circle. A lot of long range shots coming out from Stadium Fighter guys here, shooting towards uh, all the Gold Army Factory guys just over the chasm right now. Kahaya gonna land the shot onto Skyrex and making life incredibly difficult for them. They are on the low ground, they are inside the circle, so I don't expect this to be too detrimental for them, but it's still gonna be very awkward as Big Fam now moving in to the compound and trying to return a little bit of fire sim and uh, gonna be putting up some shots towards Muddy, but Muddy is able to get the headshot there with the SKS and now that's going to give a little bit more breathing room to Geek Fam, but they are at the mercy of Stage Gaming and Gold Army Factory. But Gold Army Factory uh, still very much on this high ground position here. Going to have a lot of vision onto the surrounding areas. It looks like Dream's able to connect with that headshot there. Young going to be without the helmet there for um, possibly the rest of the game here, unless they're going to bump into one of these compounds. It's just not a lot of places that you can get to. And Bunny Hop taking a big hit there from Darkus as our winners from round number one, returning the pressure onto the high ground. Now, Minnow Copy Job also does have Physics Gaming very close to them. They're just gonna have to be a little bit mindful of that. But next circle here, shifting all the way up north, it looks like Red Sea and Fair uh, Flash Vision here have got very good 
um, positions here or put them in the circle. So yeah, I know I'm saying here a few more times, but uh, do bear with me. This, the change doesn't happen overnight. But yeah, looks like we're having Darkus and the rest of the Nicole Jump just trying to own up the crater fields, but they do have to move pretty soon here. Darkus spotting out the Fisrix gaming player on the high ground. Going to back out just a little bit after taking one shot. Now, we have Flash Vision going to be uh, deploying some of their smoke grenades already here in the early stages of the game. And currently, Parapai is going to be taking a little bit of damage there for the time being. He is going to back down just a little bit below the ridge side so that he can actually get away. But now, looks like Blue Zone is going to be closing in. Minnow Copy Jump does need to rotate. They do have their vehicles still available at the moment. Everyone from the south is going to be all piling in pretty essentially here. Hickey going to be nicely all the way from the rest of them, but Kenny actually going to town there from the high ground for Geek Fam. And he takes down Nine Holy as well. Now, there's only going to be Roy and KMF1 still up here for the time being, but Kenny going to spot him out and move back just enough so you can avoid taking too much fire there. But looks like we have Conventure coming in here and going to be putting some pressure onto them as well. Wilt's getting taken down by uh, Quacker as they were trying to rotate through this zone. Sim's going to continue onwards. Wilt's going to be left for dead here as Sim going to be meeting up with Young and the rest of his uh, team. But they're going to be running straight into Crossfire. And now Rebex here and the rest of them are going to be putting up some good shots. Rebex has the... Uh, M249 available. Young going to keep going there after Kids Young going to get knocked down from the vehicle there. And Young with almost no life left. Otaro going to catch him out there. And actually the vehicle continued onwards here and was able to take down the Stadium Fighter player. But um, I think the rest should be okay here for the time being. It wasn't a, a full flush kill there. So now everyone is very much congested inside the center of the circle we're at the 21 minute mark and there's still 41 people alive red sea now gonna see if they can continue their skirmish with flash vision not gonna help either team they're not pushing it too much since they both have those good positions inside the circle already and won't expect that to change too much conventure here gonna be under long range fire here and didn't either actually knocking himself out there for gang FTY, so a bit unfortunate in that instance there, but uh, Conventure is still going to be holed up inside that compound. It's only going to be half inside the circle, and Geek Fam will be able to gatekeep them to a certain extent there, but Sin coming up big there, able to take down Aplux there, so uh, looks like Quacker here going to have to make do with the three players. Uh, Aplux was a little bit on the separated side from the rest of his team, going to make things difficult. Now Sin running across open ground here, Looks like that's going to be it for stage gaming as they get eliminated here into uh, 13th place here. And we're going to see that, uh, wow, a good rotation from the crater fields now for Minokopi Jap. They do have a lot of space to work with and shooting from the high ground onto Flash Vision. Mr. Pa getting knocked down in that instance. But now it looks like Forsen going to get taken down himself as the venture trying to move in, um, uh, or rather... Cracker trying to move in right past Gaventure. Now it looks like Crossfire is under a lot of pressure themselves as Teddy and uh, uh, Revax getting taken down. Grizzom going to be the last player left up here for the time being. And he's going to have to try and prevent that further advancement coming his way. Quacker going to be over the chasm there. Lion Desert trying to spot out any more of these teams moving in pretty late as uh, we're seeing that Zack and uh, Chi going to be moving in late for, for face gaming as they're just trying to get inside the zone but it looks like Zach not going to be able to make it there and now Nura going to be moving in a little bit but going to lie thrown there with this full vision there from the high ground and going to be finished off there and Gaventure going to have to make do with the three players that they have left and try and get inside to the zone into a good position but currently they are moving very close to Geek Fan. not a very good spot there for Gaventure they have to deal with all these players there now with the circle moving in in this way, at least it does give them some opportunity. But Stadium Fighter is putting up more shots. NGRX trying to get inside the vehicle there, but he's going to get taken down by Lion Desert. But the kill steal coming out there from Skyrex. Now, it looks like Skyrex and Rico is going to be in a bit of a spot there. They are not inside the zone. They have to move down into a very exposed position just to try and get inside the zone. But now Flash Vision also in rotation themselves, going on foot here, trying to get inside the circle, but they are taking quite a bit of damage there from Physics Gaming. They only have those little trees that is available to them right now. And Mr. Pa taking a big headshot there. And now Parapai actually getting mowed down there by Jay-Z, Jay-Z with the SKS and 
Nice shots coming out from him. Buddy Hop also feeling the burn here. And ooh, looks like Skyrex recoil is going to get taken down there. But actually, it looks like there was a little bit of a fender bender there. And that was going to always leave it down to one player left there for Quacker. But now, the, even though Flash Fisher moving up onto the high ground here, there is still going to be the players here from Minokopicha going to be trying to make their way over here. As now Awam and Jay-Z, Jay-Z trying to get in themselves. They are not in a very good position here. The rest of Flash Vision is putting up a lot of pressure onto them. And uh, I guess they're probably going to have to wait for right now where we're already seeing K-Bytes and the rest of Minocopy Chop starting to come across there. But they spot out X-Fang as well. Trying to move inside the zone here and just not going to be in a very comfortable spot right now. Yes, run across quite a bit of open ground just to get in here. Bondlich is going to get finished off by Rose of Speed. Now X-Fang going to get taken down. Jay-Z, Jay-Z also down himself. But Syed going to be moving in from the high ground. Esco Rex gets taken down. And now Syed has other problems to worry about. Coming in from the side. Not able to finish off the kill there. And it looks like Fister Gaming going to meet their end. As now we are almost into the final stages of the game. 19 players left alive. 9 teams left. And we still have Chief Frost Stadium Fighter still... Uh, not Stadium Fighter, the stage... Uh, face Gaming, sorry. Uh, moving in from that southwestern side. But he has got Red Sea and Stadium Fighter both closing in on his position. It's just not looking too comfortable for him. With the uh, Stadium Fighter holding this control on the southern side, they do actually still have Geek Fam just a little bit further away from them. So he's gonna... They're gonna have to just be playing this a little bit carefully here. Circle is gonna be shifting up north. And it looks like Geek Fam gonna be the first team to make their moves trying to get inside the zone. Now, Stadium Fighter trying to put up some shots there, but they know that they don't have great position, but the nice shot coming out there from Kahaya gets another headshot, and looks like Madi gonna have to get another helmet there, but uh, they're gonna be in short supply at this stage of the game, and looking at the play area, there's just, there's no compounds left, so yeah, you're not gonna really have any chances to reclaim anything unless you manage to get uh, one off some lucky, uh, or rather unlucky person still on the ground and not breathing. But Chilrex going to be here on the edge for Coventure. He does have M0 a little bit further on the high ground, which could be a little bit of a factor for both of these teams. If they want to really get those placement points. Shoku getting caught out in the open. This Pacoya also running for dear life, but just not a lot of space for them to go. Rozax D actually getting taken down by Papa Zaya as the last player left up here. Or no, sorry. He's th there's still Hahagus and Papa Zaya still left alive here for Red Sea. But looking at things here, it's looking a little bit dicey as Papa Zai does have quite a bit of open ground to traverse here and I'm not sure he's going to be able to get much cover from the rest of his teammates as there is still going to be that ever looming presence of Minokopi Jeff on the high ground. It's going to be very difficult for them to actually deal with this kind of situation there. But uh, we can actually see how things are going to be developing here as we will be seeing that uh, Otaro and the rest of Stadium Fight are also shifting their attention towards Minokopi Jeff. Now, Savior gonna be also on the high ground here. Nine kills already for Geek Fam so far in this game. Looking pretty decent for them, but looks like Red Sea is gonna be in a bit of trouble. Joku getting knocked down again here. And Haha Goose taking quite a bit of damage. Papa Zayat gonna be moving in with the vehicle, trying to get into a better spot there to support his teammates. And he's gonna pop around the side, but Lion Desert gonna be putting up some significant hits, but it's actually gonna be Esco Rex that gets the kill there. Now, looks like Ataro is going to be down for the moment. Hahagus just biding his time, popping off another heal after taking down the player there. And Lion Desert actually in, uh, getting knocked down there by Chi, but looks like Kahaya going to be able to back him up just then. Now, Geek Fam does have quite a few vehicles here on the high ground. Darkus looks as though he's going to be left for dead here. Not going to be able to save him too effectively, but Esco Rex going to run right past Parapai and... Uh, Oh, frantic! And Nesco Rex actually comes out on top. He didn't have his gun out at all at that moment, but uh, he comes out on top of the Flash Vision player. And we're seeing K Bytes and Rosalexi going to be a little bit further separated here. Hickey going to be just occupying this high ground. And now might be able to spot out K Bytes, but oh, K Bytes actually going to get the kill there. Is Hickey not able to land enough of those shots there at the crucial moment? And that's going to be Physrix 
esport out of the game and we only have six teams left the circle looks like it's going to be minute copy job so could minute copy job do a frost fire and win multiple chicken dinners this evening we'll have to wait and see how the next few rounds are going to go but they're looking like they're in a strong position only lost uh darkus a little bit early on in the game but oh it looks like chillrex going to spot out m0 and the two solo squad members are going to go at it with in with mortal Kombat right now the nade going right over the top here not going to be able to do much m0 going to back out a little bit further towards the northern side as uh, oh dark has actually got rest there by esco rex my bad so four players up here for the time being for minnow copy jump now how is actually getting caught out in the open and kenny um piling on pressure but esco rex gonna pick up another kill here and it looks like minnow copy jump is in for a great game here they have three kills apiece there between Rosalix D, K Bytes, and Escorex. So good all round contributions from the team. Kahaya going to be in a difficult spot. He is still currently outside the zone right now. Escorex, not sure whether he's paying too much attention in that direction, but he is going to have to start to navigate his way in just a little bit. Now, Madi going to be taking the vehicle here and see whether he can get into a better spot here and make his way further up the hill here. But Savior going to spot out Chillrex there and it looks like Geekfam is on a killing spree. Now, looks like the high ground is going to be very much in the favor of Minokopi Job. They can pop up and down for days. They have great spread going to be able to see up multiple angles coming up this hill soon be very difficult to surprise them geek fam going to be the strongest team here besides besides them but m0 getting spotted out there by k bytes and k bytes landing shot after shot he can really afford to just move back down onto the low ground here but esco rex going to finish our kahaya and we have 10 kills now on the board for minocopy jump m0 just not in a fantastic position he's trying to get that oh crucial a pick there, but the nade from Rosaxty is good. And now we only have two teams left remaining here. Savior going to be moving down along the low ground here. He might be able to get some flank shots there, but just not a lot of places you can move up here to try and settle the score. But now they are starting to move up. Kenny going to be able to get the knock on to Darkus. It's three versus three now. And they could usually push up here a little bit more, especially if they decide to go for the rest. But just so few avenues for them to work with but the circle is going to be in favor of geek fam but uh, i feel that we're still going to have a very decent chance for uh minnow copy job to advance further into the circle here pretty soon as they are still having the high ground advantage they also do have the numerical advantage as they are getting up darkest right now but uh, with the kind of spread that they have here, Savior might be lying in wait here. See whether or not he can catch any of the middle copy job players coming down from the high ground. k is going to be even further up above there. Now, Madi going to be also on this other side. So they do have the field quite spread. Madi doesn't have a helmet, but he's going to use that good positioning that he has available for the time being. Penny here facing the brunt of the damage here, but it looks like Dark is going to get surprised by Savior. Savior going to have to heal off a little bit here. Now, Rosex D and the rest of Minikopi Chop rotating around to this position here. They are not going to rest right now. Savior going to get picked off. There's only going to be Madi left in this game. And it's going to be a two-on-one situation. Esco Rex uh, trying to get the, the res off for the time being. Well, he does have the time, but Madi going to try and come up over the top here. He has concealed his position enough that he can try and spot out where these other players are going to be. He knocks out K-Bites straight away, but looks like Esco Rex and Rosex D are ready for him. And they're going to be able to take him out and get their second chicken dinner in a row. So, awesome play coming out there from Minokopi Jump and superior positioning up on the high ground there and really making it difficult for other teams to advance up there. And despite not having the circle towards the end, they are able to really make it work with the numerical and the elevation advantage. So, six kills coming in for Rosex D and uh, Esco Rex going to get five kills. K Bytes contributing with the three kills as well. In second place, we have Geek Bam. Geek Bam getting quite an even spread on the kill side of things. 11 kills in total and come in second. And Gang FTY coming in third place again and doing so with only two players in this round. So good play from M0 to survive right to the end there. But it was always going to be that difficult spot that he was in to try and deal with the Minocopy Jump players coming around the side. 
And in fourth place, we are going to have Stadium Fighter. We're in there for round number one. I think Otaro and uh, uh, Kahaya were playing with Gang FTY, but uh, now they do have their teammates here. So let's see how they, how good they can play. They managed to get that top five spot already. And in fifth place, we're going to have Gaventure. So Gaventure getting into those later stages with a lot of difficulty. In fact, they had to sneak in with Chorex taking quite a bit of damage from a lot of the teams in the southern side. So that's going to be it here for round number two, guys. You're watching Play of the J, so I hope you're enjoying your evening and having a very good start to the weekend. So we'll be taking a short break, and when we return, we'll have round three on Erangel.